Gomorrah. He was ready to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. He could have by one blast of his nostrils blew them off the face of the earth and their place would no longer exist. But because he had a man in the earth who had conquered his image nation, he had to go to the man that had dominion over the region and say, look here, Abe, it's in my mind to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. And look at the negotiation. One man, one man, one man dare to negotiate with God and say, what if it's 50? What if it's 40? What if it's 30? What if it's 20? Then he got down and said, peradventure, if it's 10. And God had to honor the man who had defied his image nation. Who dared to believe he was who God said he was. A man that had obtained righteousness without the cross. My God, he had to believe. Do you understand? Jesus had not died. There had been no Calvary. He just had to accept he was righteous because God called him righteous. My God, it's the same thing with you. You ain't seen no cross. You ain't seen no blood. You just have to believe that far, far away on a hill, there was a cross where the blood of Jesus ran down for me. You ain't never seen it. You got to accept it by faith. What if his imagination had said, you can't do that? Lot, his daughters all would have been destroyed. But because of a man, the force of one, one can chase a thousand. Can you imagine if two of us would come in agreement? See, I, I can tell when we don't make progress, we're not in agreement. Because how can two walk together except there? It ain't about your affection for me. Oh, it ain't about you looking at me and saying, wow, oh, that my pastor, she this, she that. That ain't what's important. You know what's going to really work is when you start agreeing. When you start believing this message, it ain't about me. When you start saying, you know what? I believe there's some truth to the message of this gospel, and I'm going to make it real in my life. When we get in agreement, then we can walk together. People can admire you from afar, and that's what some of you do. You admire me from afar, but I need somebody to get in the wall with me. Come on, get bloody with me. Come on, roll up your sleeves with me. And the way to do that is you got to agree. And you can't agree and doubt at the same time. You can't agree, agree and be in unbelief at the same time. You cannot agree and practice sin consistently right, at the right, same time. Right, You're, right. Not in agreement. You're not in agreement. Uh -uh. You cannot agree with me and not pay your time. Say I'm with division right. and don't give. You're right. not in agreement. Oh. Right. You're just admiring me from uh -huh. afar. Yes. I'm going to see that. Yes. Now what keeps me like that? My image. Yes. Huh? Right. I'm gonna say, I hope you're getting this. Yes. But there's a privilege in your purpose. Yes, it is. There's a privilege. Mm. Revelation 1 and 6 said, He have made us kings and priests under who? God and His Father. To Him be glory and dominion how long? Yes. Forever and ever. We're kings and priests under God. In other words, we work directly with God. We don't have to go to no other man to get approval to work in the earth. We don't need nobody else's permission. The only thing that's holding you, the only thing that's keeping you from the success that you so long for is what's between your two ears. And see, there's a stronghold called ignorance. Yes, that's true. That when it comes to learning, especially in the community of the church, it takes a great discipline to sit and be taught. Right. We'd much rather be entertained. We'd much rather somebody, we want to come once a week like this to your counseling service and somebody make us feel good and we go on back to our struggle because that's what we're used to. Well, I'm not interested in helping you endure your struggle. I'm interested in helping you change it. I'm interested in helping you stand up and bring a, a, a change and effect difference in your life. That is my interest in you. For you to completely model the power of the kingdom of God and what happens when the favor and the glory of God is on your life. That is what I am interested in. You becoming so one with him that nothing could set upon you to hurt you or to harm you. That if you left kingdom life, wherever you went, when you walk in that people will say God is with them. Yes, yes, yes. That's what I'm interested in.
sit down. He's made you a king and a priest. Isaiah 61 and 6 says, but you shall be named the priest of the Lord. Look at that. His own priest. That means you're a minister to him. And men shall call you the ministers of our God. You want somebody else to call you minister. You want somebody to give you a mic and let you preach in it and show how you can put a message together. Oh, no. Your first ministry is to him. You need to make it your business to impress God. You need to change his opinion concerning you because the opinion of that God has towards you causes him to release glory on you. Yeah. 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 Do you understand that? When, when God's glory is on you, that he'll make kings change their mind concerning you. Yeah. They'll throw you in the lion den in case sleep. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. They'll put you in the furnace. Yeah. My God, and you won't burn. Yeah. Yeah. It's the glory of God. Tell somebody you need the glory on you. Yeah. Men shall call you the ministers of our God. Oh, my God. And when this happens, you're going to eat. Lord have mercy. Tell somebody I'm hungry. I'm hungry. <laughs> I'm, you ain't hungry enough yet. You, you know when you really get hungry, you be cooking a meal, but you'll open a pack of saltine crackers. Uh -huh. Something you don't even want. You'll start putting something in your mouth when you really get hungry. Even though you're preparing the meal of your choice, you'll find something. You'll start scrapping around in there and open something and put it in your mouth. Why? Because you what? Yeah, even though you know you're going to eat like you want to eat in a few minutes. The hunger will make you eat what you don't want. But look at this. He said, you're going to eat the riches of the Gentiles. And in their glory shall ye boast. Now, what's the riches of the Gentile? Who has the control power in the earth now? Who? The Gentiles, the unsaved, the ungodly. They're in charge. But the Lord says, as my priest, you're going to eat their riches. You're going to suck their breasts. What does that mean? Somebody say transfer. transfer. As I come into my glory, it's going to provoke. God, look at this. It's going to provoke sinners. Do you understand? It's going to provoke sinners to see that I've changed my mind. The glory of God is going to literally cause them to help me. I cannot depend on the community of the church because most of them are still fighting with their image nation. Yeah, right, right. But sinners got what I need. Yeah, right. I, I don't know if you understand. They own most of the major corporate. What does the church own? We don't own no hotels. We don't own no businesses, nothing. We don't even have a product. We don't manufacture anything. We're the biggest consumers on the face of the earth. And if we keep going the way we're going, it'll be another generation before we own anything. But I'm determined to change that. I am coming to empower the harvest. We have got to rise up in our minds, and instead of using our imaginations to stay behind and stuck, we got.